Welcome to Culver Cliff. My name is Tim Wanda, Ireland historian and author, and I'm going to spend a little time to tell you about this amazing headland that has stood as a sentinel and defender against those foes who would wish to do us harm. Today it bears the scars of generations of warfare and habitation, and beneath its ground, hidden today, prehistoric man buried their dead here and the Romans camped across the headlands and even made pottery. But today what you mainly see are the buildings and scars that came about through the paranoia of the 1850s when Lord Palmerston instigated a huge programme to build Napoleonic forts as a defence against the French. There was a great belief that the French were going to sail their ironclad battleships offshore and bombard the headland and the Isle of Wight's villages behind. The rush over the next 20 years to build batteries and forts and barracks was unprecedented. Just in this single area alone we have Sandown Barracks, the granite fort in Sandown, which today is the zoo, Yavlin Battery, Redcliffe Battery, Stainwood, Culver Battery, Bembridge Fort and Nodes Point beyond. Today all of them still survive in some form apart from Redcliffe which has all but disappeared over the cliffs. They were known as Palmerston Follies but in reality they were the nuclear deterrent of the time and for 60 years they never fired a shot in anger. Today Culver Cliff is one of the most beautiful places in the Isle of Wight with fantastic views across Sandown and Shanklin, Whitecliffe Bay and Bembridge Harbour and across the Solent to the mainland beyond. From 1967, most of the headland came into the control and ownership of the National Trust. Sadly, in 1967, the wireless station that had controlled D-Day and was one of the few survivors from the early 1900s was demolished and many of the battery buildings were removed. Redcliffe Battery had already fallen over the cliffs and today the Yavlin Battery is a holiday camp. In the distance, Sandown Granite Fort is now the island zoo. But if you pass up the road today and you walk into the headland, you are walking in the footsteps of countless generations of defenders who have used Culver Cliff as a sentinel against all those who would do us harm. Enjoy it and please take a few moments to remember because thousands of men and women serve the nation here to protect all that we hold dear. This is Bembridge Fort. One of the Palmerston Follies, built between 1862 and 1867 for the enormous sum of £49,000. To build it, the Yarborough Monument had to be moved stone by stone up the headland. And it was built predominantly as a barracks, but also a classic fort with a drawbridge to defend the rear of Yaviland, Redcliffe, the Granite Fort and the Culver Battery at Headland, in case the French and in later years, the Germans were to invade elsewhere and attack the heavily fortified positions from the back. For the first 60 years, it never fired a shot in anger. But in the dark days of 1945, it was reactivated to become an anti-aircraft battery, a defensive position to control and protect the batteries. But much more importantly, it took part in a secret scientific war. One of the very first radar stations, a chain home low, was installed in a purpose-built building to control the access to the Solent. Next to it, one of the first IFF, Identification Friend of Fro, radars was installed. And underground, yet another secret, the Royal Navy was based there, controlling and monitoring a whole network of undersea loops that stretched out across Whitecliffe Bay and Sandown Bay, looking for submarines and, of course, the risk of invasion fleet. All these men and women who sat and watched and waited were part of an amazing armada of soldiers and sailors and Navy and airmen and scientists who protected this nation and should never be forgotten.